What's going on? Joe. Morning coffee, cheers. You guys are wondering, I usually drink my coffee with uh, three teaspoons of, or tablespoons of fucking coffee and three small tablespoons of fucking sugar with almond milk. And usually some taste your choice, cheap shit. <laughs> All right, here's a dumb face for the thumbnail. Gotta keep the tradition going in YouTube. I got some time this morning, so I'm gonna like uh, answer a question that I got. I don't wanna pause videos. <laughs> so in uh, one of probing pause videos, somebody in the comments uh, asked a question towards me. I have a probing Joe question. What peripheral special keypads, third party things do I use when editing a vid and all that? And I say, all right, cool. I like it when people ask me questions and I did respond to him. Uh, directly, but I figured um, might as well make a video about it as well. Uh, the main thing that I enjoy using the most is my Rocket Nith mouse. Uh, when it comes to like peripherals and like tools I use for editing, honestly, this is probably like the best thing that I have for myself as an editor. You can pretty much adjust the keypads to however you want, right? And then each one of these keypads, you know, you have uh, software that you're able to like uh, create macros for or assign, you know, keyboard shortcuts to those keys, right? It's just like I said, it's one of like the best mouses for me and that I enjoy using, right? Uh, if you want to know more about this mouse, definitely check out Paul's video. Uh, he did like, um, he did review on this mouse a long time ago, which is kind of like the reason how I discovered it. You know, I was editing the video using some fucking cheap $20, $10 mouse at the time. And like, I told him about it. I'm like, oh, I'm interested in trying it out. And he actually got one for me. You know, I do appreciate that. Uh, he helped me out. So I had one for fucking years. That one broke. <laughs> Or I broke it, you know, so then because I liked it so much, I went out and bought another one. And like, you know what? It's one of those products where like I'm happy with and I don't think I'm ever going to like try to like, you know, use another one because I'm really happy with this uh, product overall. So like I said, check out Paul's video. But I mean, like in regards to personal preference, this mouse is very comfortable to use. I mean, like the design pattern is awesome. Like it feels nice and slick. Uh, the bottom, you know, like it has like these little like plastic tab things. So when you're gliding around like the mouse pad, you, you feel like very little resistance, so it's just very nice and smooth, right? So this mouse is not cheap though. It's definitely over a hundred dollars depending on where you go, right? I got my mind for like 120 or something like that, but I mean, yeah, it's it's pricey, but it's something that's definitely is gonna last me for, it has lasted me for a long time. The only reason why I got another one is because I broke the other one, you know, I just putting coffee or drinks on the, my desk, I spilled stuff on it and like it just got bad. So I just eventually had to get another one. I mean, like I had that one for like four years or plus, right? So I just recently got this one and it's been like not even a year yet, right? But yeah, I ever went to Vegas. Like I said, you can throw it in your backpack. It's very durable. It's, you know, no problems whatsoever, right? There are other options if you want to try out this type of mouse. I mean, like uh, this, the Razer Naga Trinity. I don't know anything about these mice, you know, but I mean, it does have like the little um, you know, side buttons there as well. If you don't want to use these guys, you have like some options with it, which is pretty cool. You know, seventy-four dollars. There's also the Corsair one. The only thing that I know about these ones is that uh, this one, if you want to move like the whole uh, section of buttons here, you can slide it back a bit. See, as you can see here, pretty much you can slide this entire section of buttons a little bit back. Just adjust your mouse. Like I said, I don't know much about these mice. I haven't messed with it, but yeah, there are options out there if you don't want to use the Rocket Nith mouse, right? Or not even that. Like, I mean, literally, you can just like get any gaming mouse that you may have at the moment. If you have any additional abundance that has uh, software that you can like, you know, assign a macro with it, and, you know, try messing with that to see if you like it, right? If uh, you want to learn how to edit faster or something like that. I'm sorry for the shady camera angle here, but I'm just trying to like, you know, show you how like uh, I work this thing. Hey, right, so you got like the commands here. You got all these like macros here. You know, like they have a bit of a kind of like a little like uh, angle here, so you can like, have your thumb here and all that good stuff. You have all these commands here and the cool thing about this mouse is like you have like the shift button here so when i hold this down these 12 commands they turn into an additional 12 commands right and you get your fin and all that so yeah there's a lot of like potential with this uh, mouse right so as i'm editing pretty much you know i'm using this guy's here to do whatever i need to do for my shortcuts if i need additional commands like i said i hold this guy down then i got another 12 commands i can adjust for these guys right so yeah this is, is a massive time saver for me so yeah, when it comes to like peripherals, this guy is like my go-to. Uh, it's probably like the first thing I'll suggest to anybody try is getting themselves like a good mouse, a good mouse for your editing that has macros built into it, right? And like the cool thing about this mouse, they have a software that's constantly being updated. And that's another thing I do appreciate about this mouse a lot is basically it's, it's new, it's fresh, you know, it's easy to control. You can you have pull down menus here, you know, you can 
can sign a macro, which I'll show you in a bit. You can sign a hotkey. So in this case, you know, you can like press any key that you want on your keyboard to select that option for this, you know, key right here. So you got one, two, three, four. Uh, as you can see, Lee, I have this, I use this game for Apex, right? So I got my one, two, three commands here, you know, for like the primary weapon, secondary weapon, or to holster your weapon, grenades, all this stuff to bring up the maps. Uh, but I, when I play video games, I do use this mouse, right? You know, melee attacks, you know, all the good stuff using my heels. Uh, However, the main reason why I started using this now is pretty much this. Uh, you can see here this whole jumble mess, right? So when I create my shortcuts in Premiere Pro, I use a ridiculous command I know I would not use. So for something common like the blade, I can use the Control Shift Alt B, you know, a command I would never use because it'd be too much, you know, to press at the same time. So here, here's my standard buttons. And then when I use the Easy Shift, you know, the tiny little button on the top of uh, my on my mouse, it, it turns into these additional you know, uh, macros, right? Now, now onto macros, you can create a new folder, you know, for whatever macros you want to do. You know, my macros, you know, test. Then you can, you know, you can hit it, add a new macro, and then you pretty much have this window. So now you have like, let's just, uh, for example, start recording. You hit start recording, and then pretty much you can start hitting any command you want on your keyboard, right? So do the stereotypical hello shit, hit okay. So you can see here it says hello. You can like rename it here. Go double click, select. It says hello. You say you're good. Boom. Now I have one button here that's disabled. I'm gonna pull, do a pull down menu. Go to assign macro, which is the one we just created. You can search for it. All right, here you go. Test. It says hello. And all it is is just text, right? So, so we have our hello macro that we typed out here. Make sure we hit apply. It does an update. So we got our hello here. That's another thing I do like is pretty much when you scroll over your um, your macros here, it kind of highlights what area you know it's, uh, it's it's assigned to, right? So this one assigned to number eight. So we go over here, hold the easy shift, and hit the back. Hello. Oh no, it turns out I spelled hello wrong because I'm a dumbass. But anyways, all right. So when it comes to editing, how is this beneficial to you? All right. Now again, for my macros, when you got your in and out points, right? Probably think of by default it's I or O, but yeah, but for me it's control, it's control shift I, control shift O, right? Again, since as a command, I'm not gonna ever push with my own hands. I gotta set up to leave a mouse. That way I can have like the I and O set up for something else, you know, that uh, can be more of a help uh, when I'm editing, right? So in this case, you know, hitting the button, boom, I, which is an endpoint, I can move over here, I can do my command here, on my mouse, I did a now point. Now, there's another thing I do. On my keyboard, I have a shortcut for T, and that's pretty much gonna bring up my preferences and the timeline. So on my keyboard, on my shortcut T, I have it set up as my personal preference, but it brings up the preferences and the timeline. And then pretty much here, you have options to be able to set up, add in the values for transitions and uh, the default transitions, right? So what that means is basically, Say so you have an edit here. Let's we'll see if I have a I make a cut again. I use my mouse here. I make a cut. I can control select. And then when you do a control D, say zoom in, you know, it, it adds across itself, right? But let's say if I want to like switch this to you know instead of eight, which is like kind of like a long fade, I want to do something short, like say like two, right? I actually have it set up a macro by holding down the shift and the uh, number one. A button here and what it does is that super quick so hit uh, t right again see select the default transitions to two right if i want to switch it back to eight i have it set to number two right here by holding the shift key boom you know it just it's super quick that way instead of me like punching in like the, the the values like manually you know i set up a macro where just like hit t hit tab a couple of times i hit the letter eight hit tab again hit the letter number eight then i hit enter boom you know, pretty much everything I did on my keyboard, I recorded into my mouse here. That's crazy macro, right? There is a command where you can like select the ends. I hit Control D. I move back. Again, I select the, uh, the endpoints. I hit Control D for the defaults. And as you see, what that does, it adds a, like the, the transitions and the end, right? And everything I just showed you right now, whereas like I selected the ends and I added like the default transition. I have a macro setup. My 
top mouse wheel here because you can actually push on the side to do like a down click or like a third mouse click. And that imports this uh, in this clip from like the source to this area over here and we'll be able to add like the, the transitions, right? So in that case, you know, I'm gonna do this manually, but I'm gonna move this guy here. This is like the target source, so pretty much from here, it's gonna import this clip to this area here. So by pushing this guy here, I'm not touching anything else. See, it pretty much added the crosses off, right? And imported it. You know, selected the ends and then added the crosses off. So like, you know, when, uh, when I'm editing, I need to add like kind of like uh, some B-roll or something like that. That's pretty much what I do, you know, I just use this guy. It adds the clip from the source and it adds the transition for me. So, you know, there you go. So, I mean, there's more to it. I mean, like, I don't want to get too into detail of how I edit or how I use the mouse because, you know, I'll use certain macros, but then as I start to edit, pretty much a macro does becomes obsolete for me or is not as useful or, or I decide to try something else new, you know, the way how I edit. So, it's really all I can say about this mouse. I want to keep this video as short as possible, right? So, that's one of them. I kind of want to get make another video talking about the keyboard that I use and my headset and other shit and why I decided to use it to use it and all that stuff. So yeah, I don't know. That's all I got for you. Thanks for asking questions. I'll be more than happy to answer more questions. And yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching uh, my very terribly explained video here, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm gonna join Toastmasters or something eventually. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care and peace.